Welcome back everyone. Today we'll be starting a new series on YouTube only called Hikaru's Most Memorable Games. Now you may be wondering why am I calling it Most Memorable versus Absolute Best Games. Now the reason for that is very straightforward. These are not going to be games that I solely won. They're not going to be games that I consider to be the absolute best that I played, but they will be games that were very pivotal, pivotal throughout my career. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now this first game will be a game that I played against the International, International Master Jay Bonin in the year 1997. Now, I don't have the exact date because in my games collection on chess space, I did not actually put the date that it was played. But what I do remember is this game was played very early in the year for a couple of reasons. First of all, I remember that it was very cold and it was sort of one of those dark days in New York City. Secondly, when I look at my rating, which you guys will notice here, it was a very paltry 1830. Now, again, not to shame people, obviously 1830 is not weak, but it's not comparable to where I am today. Additionally, 1997 was a very important year for my chess career because that is the year that I went from about 1800 level up to the master level, which is 2200. I did break the record for youngest American master during early on in 1998. So it was a very critical year for my improvement. Additionally, another important factor about this game is that Jay Bonin was the player who played the most rated games in the year 1997. And the player who played the second most games was actually myself. Now, I don't want to get the facts wrong and say like he played a thousand games and I played 500, but those of you who do happen to have the old issues of chess life, I remember that it was actually written in one of those issues uh, who had played the most games in the previous year. So those of you who want to go dig through the old archives can figure it out and let me know in the comments below. But this was a very important game. Now, as I said, I was 1830. Jay Bonin, 2400 player, plays all the time. Very prominent I am. He even played against my stepfather quite a bit back then as well. So the game starts with E4. Jay plays e6, I play d4, and he plays d5, I go knight c3, and here he plays the move knight to f6. Now, as you guys know, bishop to b4 is another variation, probably the main line for the most part in the French defense. Um, and at the time, what I was playing was this move e5, c5, and bishop d2. Now, I will not get into the weeds of the specific variation because no doubt there will be games later on in this collection which do feature this variation in the French defense. So after knight to c3, Jay plays the move knight to f6, and here I play the move bishop g5 now for anybody who's newer to chess and i would say probably below the rating level of about 2000 i do not recommend playing the alternative which is this move e5 because after knight fd7 here all these variations require a lot of understanding of the pawn structure so one variation you can play is knight ce2 and after c5 you can go c3 knight to c6 and now you can play either f4 or knight to f3 at any rate the reason i don't recommend playing these structures is because if you play f4 here black can play f6 now i'm not saying it's the best move here as you will see from the bar but nonetheless in all these situations where you have so much tension in in the center with this pawn structure it's very very difficult to play and you don't really know when you're supposed to take on c5 when you're supposed to take on f6 and so forth and so i don't really recommend playing like this additionally the other possible line white can play here is f4 but again after c5 knight f3 knight to c6 bishop to e3 black can play a move like queen b6 for example he can also play a6 and b5 he can even play rook b8 and even potentially f6 now with all these different setups here it's very difficult to come up with one specific piece placement where white is doing well so for example if black plays f6 here what do you do you're actually supposed to take on f6 right here but to give you an example if black trades on d4 and say you get some position uh like this for example you're actually not supposed to trade on f6 when the pieces are when the knights are traded on d4 so it becomes very very difficult to understand additionally there's some variations like a6 you go queen d2 and black can even play a move like g5 at some point and it's very very sharp here or b5 a3 and g5 so all these variations are very very sharp there's also f6 and with all this chaos in the center and the tension with the pawn structure i don't really recommend playing this because there's no one straightforward setup to finish your development and get out of the opening very quickly so what i would recommend is actually what i played which was this move bishop to g5 and the reason is very simple as obviously times have changed with computers now it's easier to memorize it's easier to have a very set opening repertoire but nonetheless even in this day and age with computers i think it's really important to have a very simple plan get to get out of the opening phase get into the middle game and have basic concrete plans as opposed to trying to purely memorize 
So I would recommend playing Bishop G5 for a couple of reasons. In this position, if Black plays Pawn, takes Pawn. After Knight takes Pawn, Black not capture the Knight because that would lose the Queen on D8 here. And if Black plays Bishop to E7, you can play Bishop takes Knight, Bishop takes Bishop. You go Knight to F3, guarding the Pawn on D4 here so Black cannot capture. And after Castles, you play this move C3 because you want to follow it up with Bishop to D3. Now you could not go Bishop D3 right away because that would actually hang this Pawn on D4. So you go c3 protecting the pawn let's just say black plays knight d7 you can go bishop to d3 let's say black plays b6 here to fion keto the bishop but after castles bishop to e7 you can go queen to e2 followed by rook to e1 and rook to d1 and you finish your development you have your pieces very well placed in the center of the board and the middle game begins and you don't have to waste all day trying to memorize a certain setup you just play these very straightforward moves uh finishing your development very naturally so this is one line another line that black can play is knight b to d7 but after knight takes knight knight takes knight it's very simple again you can go knight to f3 let's just say bishop d6 for example and after bishop d3 you have the option to castle your king to the king side or you can play queen d2 or queen e2 followed by castling to the queen side so say black castles one line you can play here is queen e2 followed by castles and eventually you're probably going to look to trade on f6 and play queen e4 threatening a checkmate so one sample line let me just illustrate it with some random moves is something like rook e8 castles let's just say black plays a6 you can go rook a e1 let's just say black plays rook b8 and you can take and even go queen to e4 here potentially um attacking the pawn on h7 you can also play knight to e5 followed by queen e4 but it's very very straightforward and the themes generally tend to be pretty similar which is you put the rooks in the center you maybe take and go queen e4 you maybe go knight e5 but it's all the same piece placements now if you're newer to the game it's really important to keep that in mind that generally this the saying that we have about other things in life which is kiss keep it simple stupid really does apply to the to the beginners in the game of chess which is you want to keep it simple so as I said Bishop to g5 is probably what I would recommend now black has a couple of options here Bishop e7 which is played in the game is the main one black can also play Bishop b4 which is known as the as the McCutcheon variation of the French defense but it's not something that I would expect players who are newer to the game to play and additionally this will this will also be featured in later games as part of this games collection so here Bishop to e7 is played now I play this move e5 and Knight to e4 is played by Jake now Knight fd7 is the main line but Knight to e4 is also considered playable so here I play Bishop takes e7 and now he plays this move Knight takes c3 now a fun fact is that at the time I was playing a lot of turns at the Marshall Chess Club but also at the Long Island Chess Club or Long Island Chess Center and I remember this very well because one of the players who was there his name was Leonard Chipkin and he would always play this move Queen takes e7 and we had many games in this line with Knight takes e4 and D takes e4 now again this is considered a little bit dubious but on first glance you probably think well what's so bad about it now if you're playing here with white one of the basic things as I said is you're looking for simple concepts development get your king out of the center as quickly as possible get into the middle game without having to waste too much energy thinking about the possibilities because again if you're thinking too much early on you're much more likely to make a mistake and end up in trouble now after D takes E4 the first pretty straightforward plan that I can see white wanting to play is how to develop this Bishop in the Knight so that you can cast the King out of the center now the most obvious choice is to go Bishop C4 because you can't go to D3 because that would hang the Bishop and if you go to E2 your Knight can't go to F3 here because the pawn controls the square and putting the Knight on the rim is a little bit dim so the most straightforward plan would be to go Bishop C4 let's just say black castles you go Knight E2 Knight C6 and castles and boom you finish development you're very very happy here but the problem is after Bishop to C4 black has this move Queen to B4 check or wait sorry not castles black has Queen B4 check and your King is in check but your Bishop is also under attack and there's no way to save the Bishop here if you block with the Queen or you push the pawn black simply captures the Bishop on C4 and he has an extra Bishop so you'd love to go Bishop C4 but how do you do that so if you if you play this move c3 in this position you stop queen b4 and now you also protect your center and you can go bishop c4 and 92 next so this actually happened in the game that I played against Lenny Chipkin at the Long Island Chess Club in 1997 he castled and here I play this move queen g4 a little bit dubious showing that even if you have even here knowing what the basic plan should be to finish the development I tried to be a little bit too aggressive here by playing queen g4 and bringing my queen out early now this is not actually a bad move in and of itself but it violates some of the basic opening principles which is why as I said before kiss is really really important if you're newer to the game so I play queen g4 
uh f5 is played by chipkin and here i play queen f4 now i probably should have played on passant but this is not great because after queen takes f6 there's both the rook and the queen targeting the pawn on f2 if i play this move knight to h3 to guard the pawn black can now play e5 with a discovered attack of the queen on g4 and if i move my queen to g3 after pawn takes pawn takes queen takes pawn black is simply up an extra pawn here and doing very very well I could play queen g3 here which guards the pawn in f2 and stops e5 and the computer thinks that this is okay for white but again it's a whole different kettle of fish so instead I play queen f4 which is actually a very bad move here because now the pawn on e4 is no longer a weakness since it's guarded by the pawn on f5 chipkin continues with c5 I castle my king here again I'd love to develop but I can't really because the same problems apply here with queen b4 check so I castle he takes on d4 and now I play this move pawn takes pawn now I could have played rook takes pawn but if I take with the rook after knight to c6 let's say I go rook to d2 black can simply play queen c5 and he's going to win this pawn on e5 because he's attacking it with both the knight and the queen and I'm only guarding with my lone queen so after pawn takes I decide to take with the pawn plays bishop to d7 I go knight to e2 trying to put the knight on c3 and then develop the bishop to c4 bishop to a4 is played rook d2 rook c8 check I block with the knight and now he plays this nasty move queen b4 now this is still probably okay for white after queen to e3 but black can play knight d7 followed by knight b6 and knight d5 or even double stacking the rooks on the c file and it's it just feels easier to play for black I think if I had this against say Magnus I think I would lose this probably 90 percent of the time because of how unpleasant it is nonetheless this would have been one way to try to survive but again 1800 just playing chess I played this move d5 Chipkin plays knight d7 and now I play this move pawn takes pawn which loses the game on the spot what I should have done is I should have played queen to e3 to prevent the sacrifice on c3 but instead I took goes rook takes knight I take back and now he plays this nice move rook to c8 because if I capture the knight on d7 let's say the pawn black can take with check if I block I get mated if I go king b1 there's queen c1 checkmate and if I take here with the rook on d7 for example again black just takes with check or actually sorry rook c3 is probably simpler here let's say rook c3 I go king d2 and there are multiple ways to win but probably easiest is rook c2 because after king to d1 here there is queen to b1 queen c1 queen takes queen checkmate and if I go king to e3 here black can simply go queen to e1 and after king d4 there is queen to c3 king d5 and queen to c5 checkmate as well so in this position after after rook c8 I play c4 trying to stop these threats he goes rook c6 I play queen e3 stopping queen c3 check but after rook b6 it's hopeless here because there's queen b1 which is a checkmate I, it's very hard to stop it I played bishop d3 preventing it but in the game Chipkin plays queen a3 I go rook b2 and after queen takes b2 I got checkmated probably one of the very few times that you'll ever see a video on YouTube where there's a game that I got checkmated let alone allowed it um at any rate this was the game that I played against Chipkin I was you know obviously a little bit weaker and so I lost the game but nonetheless I think it's very illustrative so in the game with Bonin, Bonin does not take the bishop here. Instead, he plays this interesting move, knight takes knight. Now, I think the reason Bonin played this is because he was playing against a kid. I was 18, 1830 at the time, and he thought, you know what? Even though this end game with bishop takes queen, knight takes queen, bishop takes pawn, knight takes pawn is a little bit better for white due to the bishop pair. He figured he's playing a kid kids don't know how to play end games now of course in our modern age it's a lot easier to study end games and I hope to do some end game content as some of you who posted in your comments to my my recent community post mentioned I do hope to do some end game content but at any rate at the time uh there was a th theory that kids are just not very good at end games they're all about tactics so I decided to not do this I played queen g4 instead and Bonin plays this move queen takes bishop and now here I play this move queen takes pawn now I could have taken the knight and the material remains even but after black castles here it's probably a little bit easier to play because black can play c5 and knight c6 he can also play f6 to open up this f file very quickly so say I go bishop e2 he can play this move f6 and after pawn takes queen takes knight to f3 black has this nasty move e5 here or knight to c6 followed by e5 and there's a lot of pressure here additionally in this position black can also play c5 and after knight f3 there's knight to c6 castles and once again f6 because after takes takes now I have problems in the center of the board I can't move my queen back because then black would win a pawn here and if I don't move my queen this e5 move is still a very very big threat 
So I decide to play this move, queen takes g7, because I figure, okay, I attack the rook at once. If he moves the rook, I take the knight, and look, lo and behold, I simply have an extra g pawn. So I should be doing really, really well here. Now, after queen takes g7, Bona plays this move, queen to b4 here. I take the rook, and he goes king to d7. Now, initially, it, it looks quite scary for white for a couple of reasons. First of all, I cannot castle my king. I'd love to, but I can't castle because you can't castle through the check on d1, which would be delivered by the knight on c3. Additionally, I can't take the knight because after queen takes pawn, now he's attacking both the king and the rook here. So it looks really, really scary, right? And on first glance, you're like, I mean, takes, takes, king d1, you lose the rook, lose the pawn, everything falls apart. But once you take a bit of a second to assess, what can white actually do besides taking this knight on c3 here? There aren't really many options. You could play bishop d3 maybe, but after queen takes b2, you're still going to lose the rook in the corner. Can't go to c1. If you go to d1, I take with my knight. And again, this, this would be very, very bad because black can simply take the pawn on d4. So when you look at the, the possibilities and candidate moves that exist, which is all the different options, b takes c3 is actually the only move which is playable. Because after queen takes c3, you do not have to go to d1, but you can go to e2 here. And the thing is now, if black chooses to uh black chooses to take say the pawn on c2 your king can go to f3 you can run the king out to like g4 and it's very very hard to judge what is actually going on here because after f4 queen takes a1 knight to f3 white is threatening bishop b5 check winning the queen on a1 pawn on h7 is weak and the king is actually kind of safe here on g4 but it's very hard to judge precisely what is happening so queen takes c2 is is one option but in the game my opponent jay bonham plays this move b6 which is also a very tricky move because black wants to play bishop a6 check and then maybe knight c6 immediately now in this position on first glance it looks really really scary um it's worth noting also queen takes a1 is not a great move here because now white can play knight to f3 and after black plays knight c6 there's this move king to d2 here and if black tries to capture the pawn on d4 you have bishop b5 check knight takes bishop rook takes queen which is winning and after queen takes a2 this is actually played in a game i forget i don't have the in my analysis have the game written down but this was played but after queen takes h7 king to e7 this is actually really really good for white because there's queen h4 king e8 you check king e7 you check and after king e8 you just play bishop d3 with the idea of simply going h4 h5 h6 h7 h8 and the king on d2 is also very very safe here with the bishop guarding the pawn so say black plays knight before there is no real threat here because your bishop guards c2 black can't really go after the pawn on d4 he'd love to have this pawn on c7 on c5 but the knight isn't in the way and so white is simply winning one sample line would be queen to a3 h4 queen to e7 h5 black trades goes king f8 h6 king g8 h7 check king h8 knight to g5 threatening mate in one with knight takes pawn black plays knight to d8 guarding the pawn and now this brutal move bishop to g6 because if black plays pawn takes bishop you go pawn to f7 here black cannot move the king to stop the f pawn because then you queen the h pawn and the only way to stop the pawn from promoting to f to becoming a queen on f8 is to play knight takes pawn but after knight takes king f7 you make a queen king takes f7 and rook h7 is checkmate game over everything is finished so b6 was played instead here with the idea as i said of playing bishop a6 now here i go rook to c1 moving the rooks it was under attack but also guarding this pawn on c2 bonin plays knight to c6 here now he could have played bishop a6 as well but after king to d1 here if black takes the pawn with check you can simply block and after takes takes queen d3 king e1 queen e4 check knight to e2 white is winning because black not really develop this knight without hanging the rook in the corner on a8 here so you can't bring the knight into the game and additionally with a knight protecting the king here i can go king f1 eventually i can even go h4 and rook h3 and with an extra rook eventually i should be able to untangle and win the game so after rook c1 bona plays knight c6 here attacking the pawn on d4 now in this position i actually play this move king to d1 now the idea is very simple after queen takes d4 i can again block play knight e2 finish my development and long term with this extra rook on h1 i should be able to bring it into the game and win so it's looking very very good however bona finds this very tricky move bishop to a6 here now he's attacking my queen on h8 but also my bishop on f1 now if i move the queen to say queen takes h7 he plays bishop takes f1 and the computer still likes white but it feels very very scary and if i don't take the rook well what else do i really do i could take the bishop but then i hang my queen and that would be losing so i take the extra rook bona plays bishop takes f1 and here i play this move knight to e2 now the computers actually show that white can 
white is actually winning after queen g8 because even though this king is very weak i do have two rooks for a lone bishop and after black plays queen takes d4 king to e1 say black moves the bishop back to a6 i can just go queen takes f7 king to c8 and now i can take king to b7 and i have this very weird looking move queen to h6 because if black takes on e5 i can block with the queen if black checks on c3 i can also block with my queen and i'm only one move away from developing my knight and if i can develop the knight well that also is game over because i can develop the knight bring the queen back and as long as my king is safe the two rooks will be worth more than the lone bishop however at the time as in 1830 not being able to calculate the way that I am now I play this move knight to e2 which also looks like a very sensible move because it attacks the queen on c3 it also guards the pawn on d4 and I'm attacking the bishop on f1 with my rook as well however black can play bishop takes knight king takes knight takes d4 king d1 and he has a very nice move here which saves the game once again I have two rooks for a knight not not unlike before it would have been two rooks for a bishop but the one difference here is that my queen is in the corner it's not active it's not on say the g file where it can come back to g5 and guard the d2 and e3 squares so my queen is off on the side my two rooks are not active and black is this one saving move which is the sacrifice knight to f3 now knight to f3 is a very good move because it threatens mate in one with queen d2 if i move my king black can just go knight to d4 check and if i go to f1 i blunder into a very nasty smothered checkmate with queen c4 check if i go to e1 there's queen e2 checkmate and if i go king to g1 there's knight to e2 check king to f1 knight to g3 check once again if i go to e1 there's queen e2 checkmate and if i go to g1 black is queen to f1 check rook takes queen knight to e2 which is checkmate my king simply has no squares here every square is covered and this is what we call the smothered checkmate so after knight to f3 I can't go king e2 or I, I mean I can go king e2 knight to four king d1 and make a draw but I can't go to f1 so after after thinking I take the knight here unfortunately after queen takes f3 king to d2 queen to f4 the game ended in a draw here because I simply cannot avoid the checks if I go king c3 black is check if I ever go back there's always queen f4 and if I go to b2 there's queen b4 king a1 queen c3 king b1 queen b4 and black just keeps checking on the c3 and b4 squares so the game would end in a draw additionally if I go king to e2 here black can play queen e4 check I can't go to f1 because then he takes and actually after king e2 he takes both rooks and black is winning and if I go back to d2 black can simply go to f4 or d4 same thing and it's a draw so after queen to f4 is played in this position the game ends in a draw now it's noteworthy uh not so much because the, the game itself ended in a draw but because this was the first time that I ever drew a game against an international master obviously as in 1830 you don't get many opportunities to play against players of such a caliber but one of the great things about growing up in New York City is that they generally had tournaments at the Marshall Chess Club on Thursday nights I think Friday I think maybe not Friday but Thursday Saturdays and Sundays are always tournaments so even as an 1800 level player I had opportunities to play against players of the international master level sometimes even grandmasters and this is the first time that I ever drew an international master so I hope you guys have enjoyed this game trying to keep it a little bit simpler trying to do some YouTube only content obviously with a lot of my videos that come from Twitch there are other interactions with chat sometimes it's not as free flowing so I hope you guys have enjoyed this I hope you take something away from it and we'll keep continuing with more games in the series of Hikaru's most memorable games but I do hope you enjoyed it once again and thank you so much to everybody make sure to hit that subscribe button below I do appreciate it and we'll be back with more games as part of this collection very very soon